Hi, John here. Uh, today is Tuesday, 2nd of August 2016. I've just uh, been talking to um, um, Ilupanga uh, and also um, Lillian, Lillian Baldwin um, from Te Horo Marae in Port Awanui. Uh, we're having a meeting for the landowners of uh, having a, a 12 block and having a, a 10 block and a having a, a 11 block and also for local people who want to come and listen to what I have to say about our shifting onto the block and leasing it and joining your community. I had a bit of a discussion with um, um, Iru and um, he let me have the marae for a meeting for the 27th, that's a Saturday. We're going to have a Friday but Saturday would be better uh, because people are working and some may not make it on a Friday. Uh, so the meeting's on the 27th on a Friday. You can arrive a little earlier than 10 o'clock. But that's the time we're going to start the hui from 10 till 12 lunch and um, 4 o'clock we wind up. Um, we'll be talking the morning uh, with local issues and also what, what I'm involved with, um, um, political matters and land matters, seabed matters, international law and also marae and um, what happens on a marae these days as far as economy, uh, technology and employment and all those issues I'll be talking about for the first part of the morning and also any questions that uh, you want answered I'll answer those but our main focus uh, for Edu is to um, have our authority from there to do what we do with the land as far as the Maori land owners are concerned and the shareholding. I'm uh, wanting to run some business there but I'll discuss that on the day. Um, and it's on the agenda, it's a seven page agenda and I've just added a bit more to it about the Highlands uh, pub in those days, the early British settlement and also a bit of Spanish settlement there. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is a British flag and we're treating that area as a British settlement uh, as far as we're concerned with authority uh, from straight from Britain, Westminster. My interests are there with Waitangi Marae as a King's Bench Court of jurisdiction and also authority from the Chiefs. King Itaurua, there. I want to link up with Edu Painga uh, in matters political and also uh, where the hapu sits with the iwi and the Maori issues and the Moai and the King um, William the Fourth Admiralty Martial Law that's bearing down on, on us from America and Obama and John Key. Those issues are a threat to our local communities on the East Coast as far as fracking is concerned, oil drilling and anything that threatens our livelihood and our natural resources. That's where I come into the picture as legal advisor and customary legal advocate for the Confederation of Chiefs of the Tribes up, um, of Hapu um, on Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. Okay, so those things I'll discuss quickly, but it's all on my Facebook. If you want to know anything, just go there in amongst uh, at least 68 websites on Facebook and also our, our um, main site, website, moaipowerhouse.com and also Twitter, 
Google, and YouTube. There's over 960 videos on YouTube um, to look at uh, different matters uh, that I talk about at Dewey. There's a crash course um, uh, that I'll give across and there's a lot of information that's worth a lot when it's put in place on the land. As far as I'm concerned, I want to do something um, with the land for the benefit of shareholding and also membership around the world of this flag in 250 countries that are uh, watching us and following what we do straight to Westminster uh, government, the new Britain, and this flag with the Highlands uh, pub hotel in Port Awanui. You see the photo on the agenda as being our main focus is to link the old British with Westminster from that little village and its early um, swelling um, and sealing uh, operations there that I want to re-establish and um, build into our new project, projects in the international trading which this flag is will send us around the world on a free passage and banking and the pound note that we're using as our currency those things matters do matter with we have to play along with the international laws and also trading as our own hapu native okay so i'm coming from a hapu native sovereign monarch um king william the fourth uh, authority straight to the New Britain, England, Wales and Altair, New Zealand and Pacific Islands as one title. So we're the third country and I think my estimation is that America will be the fourth state country in a new Britain. Okay, so I can see there's 27 countries going to pull out of the EU Parliament because it's not running like it should. And there is a lot of fraud and corruption going on in there and that's what we want to avoid here and I'll explain a little bit about that but you'll get enough information from this hui and please a koha uh, I'll have a box on the table it's got a slot in it just put your koha in there to save embarrassment just come up to the front table because I'm the chairman for the day and that's how I run my hui's I'll let you know um, uh, it is a, it is a better way to do it. Although the Marae has their own protocols uh, to follow, then I'd have to uh, make sure I do that for the one day. Uh, there won't be no overnight staying on the Marae. I just explained to um, Edu. He asked if we're staying overnight. I said no. I'll be going back to Gisborne after the hui and um, any other day for a hui, we can always have another day for one of those topics. There's plenty of topics to talk about, but the main focus is on the three land blocks um, from the fishers. Um, uh, they will come to the hui. Um, Richard and, and um, Leslie, I've met them and they're nice people, but we're going on the block next to them. They're on the hitting a, a 11 block and I'm going on to the hearing a 12 block just in from them before the end of the road um, where the gate is and then his block is back onto the sea that's where the most erosion is that's my concern is to um, mine or extract the um, soil from there the clay grey wacky soil to make concrete cement homes in steel okay so that's just something of uh, one of the um, industries I want to go into there as well as the deep sea fishing and the materials we get from there to build to put the Moai tidal energy uh, turbine power uh, station on uh, Ranfilly Bank. That's been going on for a long time now, about 15 years on planning that all up. It's ready to go and build 
and it's a major project that we have the natural resources there in that hill and we can pull it down instead of it going back into the sea and brace it up at the same time with the concrete um, uh, earth um, precast slabs and reinforcing for the hill to hold it up. Now houses are uh, of the same material that holds the hill together where the erosion is with long steel legs into the ground um, and this will help um, to hold back the hill from slipping and also the reinforcing and retaining walls around uh, the area. So that's uh, what we want to do there and um, thank you Eddie for letting me have the marae and I'm just making this announcement with the agenda readjusted because we've lost a couple of weeks now because I wanted to have this meeting to get the um, um, notice out to all the owners, landowners. I haven't heard back from Tumutumu about where their addresses are and I haven't heard back from the Maori Land Court where their addresses are. So I'll have to do it this way in social media in our friends, friends, friends and they will um, find each other that way. So if you miss out on uh, the hui, it's because we only limit it to what we can find of the owners of those blocks that we rely on you to let them know, the others, other than that I'll put it over the Ngāti Pau radio and the Gisborne Herald uh, with an ad in there for the hui uh, as soon as I can um, tomorrow um, so that you have a fair chance of being at the hui. Otherwise, we can always have another one another day if the public or anybody wants that to happen. I'm there for the people and not myself. Um, so, who is um, uh, cost money to run around all over the place? And I've had plenty of that up north um, with Ngāpui. So, we've done a lot over the 20 years with Kingi Taurua. Uh, Kingi, this one um, we're going to pass now. Uh, again, yet again, uh, with your marae, the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. We had the hui on the 15th of March 2016 to open that court for business and the trading under this flag around the world. Okay, that's our own authority to do that. And I just wanted to use the marae at um, uh, Te Horo to put that marae as our authority to do what we want with the land as far as that native part is concerned to make sure that we keep that status to the land intact with this flag straight to Britain from that English village and Spanish uh, village, the old name Port Awanui Township. I'm hoping that one day we can restore it and put it back somehow how it looked in modern material. Okay, so um, um, that's all I want to say for now, other than to uh, finish this off, uh, agenda, adjust it, and the dates, and uh, so the hui is the 27th, Friday, uh, sorry, uh, Saturday, the 27th of August 2016 at 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, and um, bring a koha with you, or some food for lunch is at 12 midday to 1, and 1 till 2 we have the meeting for the heading a, a 12 block, and then from 2 to 3 we have the uh, heading a, a 10 block, and then after that we have the heading a, a 11 block, however we didn't need too much about that one because Richard and Leslie will be talking with me all the way after that. So we're going to work together on those blocks with the others in the community. And thank you, Dick uh, Carlson, for letting me stay at your little whare on the beach. Um, but it was a cold night and uh, my friend Desmond didn't bring the blankets. And I only wanted to go there to watch the sun come up. So I'll have some more time to see that happen. And it was so cold and miserable that I didn't get a good shot of the um, sun coming up. Anyway, we'll do it another day when the sun is smiling. Uh, so, t 
to add to that, um, I'm having my meeting with the barrister. My barrister is back from overseas, been away for a while. And so that's on uh, Thursday, the 4th of uh, this month. It, um, and so uh, we'll find from there. Um, I wanted to settle out of court with Natalie Flower Dew Brown, detective, criminal detective, uh, the FBI, or CI, C, CIB, not FBI, um, police in Auckland. Uh, so I want to have her uh, arrested and locked up for what she did and broke the New Zealand Crimes Act 1961. There's plenty of that going on in police. I'm breaking laws left, right and centre. Um, and I put it on John Key's site, on my website, my, my website, two of them for him. I've got him two with all the offences and everything going on in the police force and his government stuck right on his a page I've set up for him. And it's on Natalie Flower D. Brown Facebook site, my, um, under my name, with everything she done wrong and all the offences of 61 Cook Street, or 77 Cook Street, or 98 Williamsley Street, those, all, those na na all those addresses belong to those two owners, Simon Brent Roundtree and James Pierce Brown. They're liable now to lose everything. They're going to lose a lot. The land returns back to us because of the fraud and the cover-up by the police and their convincing lawyers. Now, that's what I'm going to discuss with um, uh, my friend Shannon Withers, my barrister. He's proficient in federal law systems of admiralty and mortgage bank loans. Now, that's the part I'm familiar with, those terminologies, to wrap the case up with the judge. All I want is the judge to give a writ, to get an order, a writ order of execution to seize the property back. Okay, I'm not worried about getting compensated by the judge. I will do that in another court and take it out of the owners uh, and everyone else, the third parties involved in that fraud land transaction, right back to Doug Rickard Bell in 2008. That property has been bad all the way through from 2008. For people watching that case, and the British military and government watching this case, it's a typical fraud inside the Crown Corporation system that's falling apart with the EU Parliament and Obama and Hillary Clinton. You can see how much fraud there is going on inside the federal state and the United Nations and Helen Clark there as well being booted out because they don't want her as the leader of the United Nations because she just did us wrong here with the foreshore seabed. I'm right on to her with that. We haven't finished with her yet. And Horamia, Parikaro uh, Horamia was involved with her selling off the foreshore seabed when our chief said no, they said yes. So we've still got a bone to pick with Helen Clark in the court. In the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. Kingi Tauru, that's just one that you knew. We've been following that through for a long, long time and seabed, how to steal land and the resources. Now we have to protect our interests at Port Awanui on this East Coast lands and with Napui up north <coughs> watching this video. This is something we have to do in our time and fix it for the younger generations coming after us, the Rangatahi, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for us to make a move. This is our time. This is our time. Tamati Reed at Rangitukia. This is our time. We've got the hui on now, mate. You can come over on Saturday, sit there, and have a good, good lesson, and fix the river's erosions up, and the seabed erosion, and the erosion on the hill, and build. We're going to make the bell through the marae to build the crown corporations for pulling out our big timbers out of the hills, putting those stupid pine trees in there, and then the cows and the sheep, to take the land and trap all the little growth and make the hills slip into the rivers. I'm not blaming the cows, I'm just blaming the government for allowing 
no fixing of any land from what they've put on it and changed around. They have to give it back to us as they found it. If you look at Port Awanui on the north side of the river there, you'll see all the trees there and the land still held together. It's only a, one slip there, but that's probably because the hill was weak, weak in the area where the hill was and it took off. So that, that side is still mostly still there, but the other side where they took the trees off is all slid into the sea. And in the hill has fallen in on where all the trees used to be on the land. You can see the erosion on those blocks I've just mentioned. That's my issue legally. I'm going to build them through the marae. Kingi, we're going to set the marae up down there and the ones in Rangitukia and there and work together from those marais with our authority straight to Britain, from that little British village to straight to Britain and the new government there, new British government with us going into Westminster to as the third country, England, Wales and Aotea and New Zealand. Okay, Americans can come in later when they boot Hillary Clinton and Obama out and fix the place up, it's all a big mess. Okay, um, thank you very much people. I've, I've spoken to um, uh, Iru Painga, he seems a nice man to talk to, um, and he has let us have the marae. Now, finally, after two weeks of trying to get on that marae, I've found you find somebody that I can talk to. Uh, we had to go through the radio station, large pro radio station, and through the runanga to find who to talk to, because I don't know. I've been back there for a long time, and most of my efforts have been at Rangi, Rangi took here. Um, run my rugby mates there, and uh, also Waipu, um, Waipu Ngati rugby team in those days with John Manuel and Puka Manuel and Tutu Manuel, Kesi Wano, and all those people that I used to play rugby with. Okay, and um, um, <coughs> uh, so that's all for now. Um, we'll catch up with you again. And I'll put this with this um, um, agenda, this video, on the agenda. Don't forget that I put a photo there of the Port Awanui pub. The Highland pub was shifted from there to Tiki Tiki. And Tiki Tiki is the little village where I lived as a mechanic in the Sid Yates garage next door to Highland's pub. And Yates um, Dairy down the road, where the ice cream was. Um, and the general store, the Waipu general store there. So that, that little village, I, I spent most of my years there um, um, with my, my, my teammates and uh, diving and all sorts of things. But my interest has always been in the sea uh, and it'll remain with looking after the oceans and the fisheries. Um, in the deep sea fisheries, why we want to go on to Ranfilly Bank is to secure to the land to us, the Hapu chiefs, and also the local people of old and uh, modern day, for the young people up and coming to have something uh, to hold on rather than people coming. And you'll see that um, the government is letting in Chinese to buy, and Ray White is bringing in Chinese to buy all our land up and we'll have nothing left by the rate they're going. So we've got control, Kingi and Edu, we've got control of our lands through this flag. Please take heed that this flag is the only bank trading commercial flag in the world of a king of England and Britain, UK, Hanover and Aotearoa New Zealand. Pacific Islands. This is the only flag that will send us around the world in 250 countries on our website. Okay, so it is. They are obligated. The military. It's a military flag, protective flag. We haven't used it yet. We're just about to use it and open up our lands for commerce for ourselves. We haven't done it for ourselves. The Hapu. The Iwi's done very well out of it themselves. That's the Iwi and John Key and Wellington and the Queen. The Queen is gone. She's gone to the EU Parliament and not the same in Britain. She has abandoned ship here of Admiralty and she's usurped
King William and King William the Third, King William the Fourth, and King George the Third's authority from this bloodline into her bloodline and spoiled it. She's gone and wrecked the whole world on that side of commerce. This is our clean, mortgage-free commerce side of Britain, UK, under the King. We have a King living in London, King Ernest Augustus V. He's about 68. That was the year, that was the our age of King William the Fourth when he took over as King. It's no different. He's the real King that is on that bloodline, on the bloodline of King George the Third the father of King George the Fourth, King William the uh, King William the Fourth, and King Ernest Augustus the First. Right? Three brothers and King George the Third. That is our legacy of this flag from Port Awanui straight to Westminster and Hanover and Dover and straight to Waitangi, King's Bench Court on Kingi Todoa's ancestral lands. Okay, Kingi, does that sound right? About right? So we fly in this flag at Port Waitangi and on Ranfilly Bank and at Waitangi <coughs> before the 28th or on the 28th of October 2016 as 182 years from Kororareka to Waitangi to Westminster. 182 years since the British first landed in Kororareka, uh, Russell, uh, Kingi land. Okay, so that legacy is our authority to look after and manage our own lands under the British Protectorate military. Okay, the British military I want in Rangitokia to come on to the riverbed put the airport up and fix the river up and build John Key's government on that side, the Queen's side, build that side from the King's side, from King Ernest Augustus and the Chiefs and me, the Sheriff of King William IV, Surrogate King, Speaker. Okay? I can talk for him from that side. Edu, if you're watching this video in Muratoria, um, this is a true story. I'm talking about who we are and what we should have been doing with our flag right back then. We should have been trading, but John Key and his successful gov governments and Governor General and Jerry Matapurai was there to sell the land off and leave us out. So now they're going to have to restore that land. We're going to do it. We're going to build them for putting it back how they found it. So that's what the issues I have with legacy. Whose authority, whose sovereignty, and whose monarch seal of Westminster are they going under? Because this is our seal. You'll see on my documents, my agenda, you'll see the seals there of the king and his horse and his admiralty ship on the seal right there with the eight-point star, and it's right in the middle of the eight-point star and his crown on top. King William the Fourth's crown sits on top of the eight-point star of the four corners of the earth in this flag in the corner. That's the St. Patrick's Order of King William the Third, who booted King James out of Westminster and took over and saved St. Patrick's Order Church. So St. Patrick's Order Church is our legacy of those kings. King William III, King William the Fourth, and King George the Third, and King George the Fourth, and King Ernest Augustus the First. The first. Okay, there. That's our kings and our Maori statue standing in London is our native title. That's our native title to Britain to Port Awanui, to Te Pito at Haha Block on Marangaro Land Box, in Marangaro Marae, we're going to put a Marae up there, call it Marangaro Marae, that was, used to be the old, uh, I will tell you, change the name from Marangaro, we're going to put another one there to replace that 
right there with the Maui statue. Okay? So we'll have, put a, have, we'll have a Maui statue right there where that clay is. It'll be made out of that, like East Island. Same, same native title. Okay? It's the same native Maui statue right through the world. That's our brand name and patent to the Earth planet. Okay? That's, that's the, I'm saying these things because I'm going there for a good reason to tell the world who we are and where we came from and where, where, where the British came here. We didn't go. We're going there. I'm going there to take our mana from these chiefs on these marae there beside the marae, ma, the Moai standing in London in Queen Elizabeth's Great Court in London. That's our title people on the land. That's our legacy of our native Tahitian title to the Pacific Islands and it's Tikanga Law, L-O-R-E, Spirit to God Almighty. Alright? Everything I say on this video is truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll be God. That's how we talk when we on the Amarai. We talk straight up to the Atua and nothing no middleman, not with Maui. The Maui stands in the open and straight up. Okay? No popes, no bishops, no priests that screw things around politically and make a lot of money. Right? The Catholic Church makes a lot of money for the popes. Make, that's the church bit doesn't come into it. It's the money. That, that, so they're here for the money. The churches came here for the money. Okay? The sealers came here for the seals and and the whales. That that what those guys came into Port Awanui for. They came there for the whales and the seals. There's no church there, you see? There's no church there. It's clean cut. So Moa is clean face, clean cut. He's straight. Straight. And that's the good good thing about it hasn't been told properly. Our story has been covered up. That's what I'm trying to say here. Our history has been covered up and hidden. The bank note has been hidden. Our pound note, bank note, has been hidden and screwed around with America and the US dollar. It's fading very fast. It's was a fraud all the way through. That's why I'm telling Americans, you're being duped. You've been duped. This flag will save you. Just give me a call and I'll be over. Alright? Fix it up. Obama, he hasn't got this flag authority. He's borrowed it from the Queen. The Queen borrowed it from here. So you know what you do with borrowing? You shut them down. That's what you do. You bankrupt them with this flag. He's the one that created those mortgages and loans and banknotes and gold coins. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I want to say for now, for this extended little video. And we'll catch you again. Bye.